Hi, I'm Ron Smith, NDSU Extension Horticulturist. Today we're going to be talking about getting the garden ready for the fall. Uh, we've had our killing frosts and so the plants are ready to be pulled out and to get the garden cleaned up so that next spring we can have a clean garden to start out with and we won't have too many pests, too many insects and disease problems that we're going to have to battle with. So we might as well go ahead and get started pulling out some of these marigolds over here that have uh, enhanced our garden and are now functionless. So we'll go ahead and get those out. We've got some uh, dead marigolds here that we're going to pull out and you probably look down into the under the canopy of this marigold and see some tomatoes. These are not uh, tomato producing marigolds, but we had tomato plants in here that uh, have been pulled out already. And uh, what we do in our gardening is we plant marigolds around to not only make the garden attractive, but also to help to um, confuse insect pests in the garden. Uh, marigolds, as you know, give off a little scent that um, will disguise some of the, uh, the odors coming from the vegetables that uh, would attract some of the, the uh, destructive insects. And so we've had essentially no insect problems in our tomatoes this, this past year and the years that we've been using this. So we'll go ahead and get some of the marigolds pulled out and uh, pick up the, uh, the dead tomatoes as well. And as we're doing this, uh, we're going to be pulling up clumps of soil. And uh, you just want to shake the soil off, but you can. Get it, you don't have to get every bit of it off, but knock it off somewhat. You can see the root system that was developed there. And then we're going to take this over to the dumpster here at, um, in the community. And so these big bulky things can be crammed into the bag. <clears throat> these things are almost big enough to convert to, to lumber. Get as much of the dirt off the roots as you can reasonably so you don't have to be fanatical about it. But if you have good garden soil, you want to leave as much behind as you possibly can. And uh, this is our square foot garden soil, which has been amended quite a bit. So we take it off, shake it off, and then we try to compact this thing as much as we can to get it into our bag and then be done with it. And we got those characters up. We want to get rid of these tomatoes because if we don't, we're going to have a lot of volunteers next year, and who knows, we might end up by having uh, <clears throat> some disease carryover problems. And uh, of course, good gardening would require, or should require, that you don't plant tomatoes or any other member of the tomato family, Solanaceae family, in the same spot again. So next year, we'll probably plant something else in here, like cabbage, beans, corn, or something of that nature. Well, depending on how fussy you want to be after you've pulled your uh, garden stock out, your tomatoes and peppers and cabbage and, and basil and herbs and ever, everything else, uh, you can go ahead and just simply take a garden rake and go over and rough up the soil or uh, like you see here where you're going to be disrupting that, maybe exposing some of the, the uh, eggs or the pupal stage of the insects that might have uh, decided to take up residency in the soil. You can do that or if you're very, very fussy, you can take a shovel, just turn the soil over here, very simply, just go down to it at one depth, turn the soil over, and that'll bring the soil that was down below there up to the surface and perhaps expose some more insect problems. And, uh, um, <clears throat> and that soil should be pretty much ready to work next spring without an awful lot of work on your part. You get it done here in the fall, then you don't have to wait for the, the ground to dry out nicely in the spring because we can't, if you've lived in North Dakota for one year, you know doggone well that our spring weather is not very, very dependable and uh, <clears throat> you might wait a couple weeks for the soil to dry, but on a day like today, a nice autumn day like you see here, you can uh, work the soil, it has a little bit of moisture, certainly not muddy. And you can see how good the garden soil is that we have here. It breaks up nicely. This is our square foot gardening soil that my, my wife has worked on over the years. And these old roots that are left there will just simply decompose and add to the organic matter there in the soil. And the freezing and thawing that we have going on during our winter, fall, winter, and spring weeks will uh, help to uh, sanitize the soil through the cold weather and help to condition the soil somewhat.
One of the plants that need protection are, are raspberries. The bunnies and voles just love to nibble on these raspberry canes during the winter months. And you can see here I've put up some protection, chicken wire protection around the, uh, the little raspberry patch that I have to try to keep them out. And I also have an extra bit of insurance here called material called liquid fence. Now you can use this exclusively around the base of plants like raspberries or apple trees or things like that. It's a very repugnant smelling material and I guarantee you if you could smell this stuff on the video you would agree with me. Um, it's very, very uh, powerful smelling material that will dry them away. It's not toxic to the animals so it won't kill them but it will just dry them away uh, looking for food from some other source. So as an extra bit of insurance I can go ahead and spray this material down around the edge here which will have leave a very very strong odor and will help to keep them uh, away from the raspberries during the winter months and it won't hurt the uh, raspberries at all. Hi, I'm Todd Wyman with the Cass County Extension Office with NDSU out of Fargo, North Dakota. And we're gonna to talk today about planting stiff neck garlic. This is grown locally. And if you're wondering, well, I don't know where to get garlic, you can talk to your local nursery and they many times can order plants or bulbs or cloves or what have you for you that you might not think that they, they could and go from that route. Or you could give me, or you could contact your local extension office and see if there is someone that grows it locally if you wanted to go that route also. This garlic does very well here. This is called Spanish Roja, um, a nice stiff neck garlic that, that does well here. And what you do simply is to take your hand and break it apart. It's not that hard. They come apart like this. What I like to do with the ones where the, the outer tunic has come off, I will actually eat that part in, in whatever I'm making with garlic. Some of you may wonder why I, I wouldn't plant one that has the outer, outer layer, outer tunic off of it. The outer brown layer is a protective layer for the plant. And by leaving that on, you're giving the plant an advantage over things that might attack it, um, various fungus or insect, what have you. Um, this gives it a little bit of a shield where this one does not have that. And so that's why I like to plant these and I like to use these for consumption. But where the tunic has stayed on, I will plant that approximately four to six inches deep in some nice loose friable soil. Cover it up. Next spring, what I'll have come up there is a broadleaf grass-like plant, which is the garlic. And it will do very well and have a, a, an advantage over the ones that are planted in the spring. The garlic that is planted here needs the cold dormancy period to help it to make a nice sized break apart type of a plant versus a solid, almost like an onion type of a bulb that you can get without a cold period. And that's all that's to it. Later on, um, you'll want to remember that you planted it here or put some stakes here with what what it is and where you've got it and you'll be ready to go for next year. What we have here is a, a, an onion patch and a garlic patch that we planted in mid-October uh, to um, have uh, a good crop uh, for next year and this covering that you see here is, is, uh, serves two purposes. It protects the crop from the extremes in temperature. This is a, a frost blanket it's, as it's commonly called or Remay, R-E-M-A-Y that's available at the, uh, just about any garden supply store. And the chicken wire uh, reinforcing uh, material there also keeps the bunnies and the voles out of the, of the area. So what this does is it allows for sunlight to come through, air to pass through there, and moisture to pass through there so you're not really um, uh, cutting out any air or light or moisture that's, uh, as it comes down, but it's kind of giving it a buffering effect from the extremes in temperature that we typically experience here in North Dakota. So planting onions and garlic in the fall around Columbus Day is a very good idea.